What's going on guys, Andrew back with another video and today we're going to talk about one of the most controversial sneakers lately. I guess you could say lately. This is, uh, this is going to be a fun one. So if you're new here, thank you for joining us. If you're not new here, thank you for coming back. For the unfamiliar, this is the John Geiger GF-01. This is not an Air Force One, as uh, though it does have some similarities. So to start this review, let's go back a little bit. John Geiger is a designer who originally worked with Nike um, when he was managing Darrell Revis. He helped design the Zoom Revis 1, and then later on he would go to make custom sneakers with the Shoe Surgeon. So those of you who are familiar with the Shoe Surgeon, you may know him as the sneaker customizer for the stars. He makes a lot of high-end quality, um, quali high quality material, completely custom sneakers for celebrities, rappers, athletes, you name it. Everyday people who wanted to spend that much money on a custom pair of shoes. Not this guy. Back around 2014, John Geiger and the shoe surgeon collaborated on a pair of Air Force Ones, dubbed the Air Force One Misplaced Checks. It was, I'll show a picture of it here. It was an Air Force One high with a bunch of misplaced Nike swooshes uh, made out of different materials. They released a handful of colorways of these and it was a big step for custom sneakers at the time. So uh, obviously you had guys like Mosh Customs who was making custom painted sneakers, but these guys were really streamlining the world of custom made um, shoes down to the material choices, not just colorways. Fast forward, I don't know the relationship between John Geiger and the shoe surgeon now. I haven't seen them work together in a long time. Over the past couple of years, John Geiger has released his own line of footwear as well as clothing. So over the last couple of years, John Geiger has released his own line of footwear and clothing, and this is the latest model in a long line of well, colorways. And uh, if you look on his Instagram page, you'll see a significant amount of colorways that are not this one here. This one specifically is one of the most recent releases. It's the tan linen colorway. Obviously, if you guys are familiar with the linen Air Force Ones, one of the most coveted colorways of the Air Force One, this is kind of an homage to that sneaker and John Geiger is not hiding that fact. Looking at the shoe, you could see specific details like the rubber white outsole. You could see details like the GF-01 that's kind of reminiscent of the Air Force One logo on the side panel. You could see the heel stitching as well as the paneling throughout the whole shoe, the perforations in the toe box. Um, even the placement of the G for Geiger in this case um, is in the same spot that the Nike swoosh would be on an Air Force One. There are some significant differences like the bottoms having a JG, John Geiger logo, shape of the tongue itself and overall the shape of some of the paneling is a bit different than the Air Force One. Um, you could do a side by side comparison of the two, you'll see a very, dis you'll see a lot of distinct differences, but what makes this shoe so controversial is how incredibly similar it is to an Air Force One low. Um, you know, if you guys clicked on this video and thought this is exactly an Air Force One, you're not on your own with that kind of thought process. Right now, John Geiger and La La Land Production and Design Incorporated are in the in a legal battle with Nike. Not just like a cease and desist, like a Warren Lotta situation. This is a full-blown like legal battle. Um, over, you know, trademark infringement. Now, a lot of creators have been talking about the implications that this has on custom sneaker designers or sneaker customizers or people who want to get into the footwear industry on their own with their own designs, their own models. I don't see a lot of people actually talking about it with the shoe in their hand. So here I am trying to, you know, differentiate myself a little bit. I've had a pair of John Geiger's original sneakers on this channel before. You can look at that video, the 002 in the black and volt colorway. I no longer have those in the collection because it was just not a shoe that I ever saw myself really wearing. It was too high fashion for my taste. Whereas you see a shoe like this, the GF-01, very similar to an Air Force One, but in my opinion, with much higher elevated materials and the price point was a little bit higher than an Air Force One. I believe these were $160. I could be wrong. I'll fact check that with a number on the screen here. The shoes come through an independent designer. Obviously, they have 
clear homage. Like, I did not buy this colorway thinking, like, oh, this is better than the linens. Like, in my opinion, this is clearly an homage. This is clearly taking inspiration from the Air Force One linen, if not just copying the whole colorway, um, which John Geiger himself has stated, this is not, you know, this is an homage. That being said, it's a much better version. It's like they took the Air Force One and they elevated all the materials. The tumbled leather on the top is super supple and pliable, and the interior, honestly, I don't know how comfortable these really are. The interior has got this mesh inner lining to add some breathability, but you can clearly tell in person that the shoe is an elevated version of an Air Force One, and that's kind of what I like about it. I followed John Geiger for a long time. I've seen his progress from collaborating with the shoe surgeon to his launching his own footwear line. I've supported his footwear line. So because I was a returning customer, Customer, I actually got these a little bit earlier than the release time because you know I was a returning customer he sent out an email link and you know I'll take the benefits when I can a lot of people are afraid to say that like you know John Geiger's in the wrong the Nike's in the wrong um, I you know as somebody who's an outsider looking in somebody who has an opinion and talks about his opinion on footwear and sneaker news occasionally it's pretty clear to me that Nike has a case like there is a case against this particular type of shoe. Not to say that's a full reason, but that is also part of the reason why I wanted to get my hands on a pair of these. Because if we had a repeat of the Warren Lotta situation, which if you guys didn't already know about the Warren Lotta situation, I don't want to go into full detail. And to be fair, that's a whole other can of worms. That's a shoe that I think is a clear knockoff of like some basic Walmart skate shoe from back in the day. And I, I don't really want to get into that because I think it was just not the same page here. Uh, John Geiger has been somebody who um, has been vocal about Nike not giving him enough credit, has been vocal about Nike stealing designs from original creators or independent creators, um, whatever the case may be. Obviously, Nike has intellectual property they need to you know, maintain and they need to protect. So it makes sense that they would go after somebody who's releasing a shoe that looks like an Air Force One. Although in this case, the, this is a better version of an Air Force One, in my opinion. As someone who's not the biggest fan of Air Force Ones, I'll take this over an Air Force One. Now, that's just my personal opinion. If you like Air Force Ones, you know, no biggie. Everyone likes Air Force Ones right now. But at the end of the day, it also asks the question, where does the line form? Like, where does where does Nike draw the line? How far are they willing to go to protect their intellectual property? Because if they're going to go after somebody like Mosh, who may not be in the forefront of custom sneakers as much as he is on the forefront of his own original sneaker line, where do they draw the line? Does Nike go after sneaker customizers now because they are changing the intellectual property of that shoe and oftentimes selling it as, you know, for profit? Now, things are still in the works as of me recording this video on uh, September 7th, 2021. Things may progress and I will uh, probably post an updated video when that time comes. Um, in the meantime, one thing I forgot to mention about this shoe is that they did come with um, extra laces. They look like some uh, round black and white, almost like a herringbone style lace, which might look interesting. I kind of like the flat white laces in this shoe as of right now. Let me know in the comments what do you guys think of the John Geiger GF01s. Uh, let me know what you think of this colorway and uh, check out his, you know, he's got a, a variety of different designs and everything like that. So if you guys are interested, um, you can check out his website. I don't expect Nike to file a season to for these shoes anytime soon, but you know, it could happen at any time and these may become more valuable as a result. Personally, this is the first pair of John Geiger's uh, shoes that I could see myself wearing regularly. So I look forward to wearing these and uh, I look forward to seeing where this case goes. And that's where I'm gonna wrap up this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you guys aren't following me on Instagram already, go ahead and follow me. I look forward to making the next video, which should be, um, well, I'm not gonna show you what it is. You guys are just gonna have to take a look when that video drops. If you aren't already following me on Instagram, go ahead and follow me at Drew Reviews. And until next time, guys, this is Andrew signing off. Peace.